Hey, Nick. What is it this time? You won't believe how many people are here for the trial. Well, it is a murder case. What are you talking about? They're here for the trial next door. Next door. What? Did, don't you know this, Nick? Uh, they're having Detective Atme's trial today. Detective Atme? They say they're going to try him as Musk to Musk. Already? That was fast. Why do you sound so provoked? What? It's normal that we have these trial right one day after getting thrown into jail. There's no reason to be surprised about that. Boy, I'd love to see Musk to Musk's trial. Yes, go ahead, Maya. You know what? Just do it. I'm sure the you know, this trial is going to be very boring. Watch watch the Damask trial. I'm sure it's going to be much more interesting than ours. Translation, go away! By the way, where's Pearls? Oh, she went back home. She said she can't neglect her training anymore. I know you don't like me. Pearls has really gotten into her training lately, huh? Yeah, ever since that incident last year. Because beforehand she was very lacky and slacking off? Please, don't ignore me! Oh, Mr. Delight, good morning! No one likes me. Please don't sound like the whiners I have been dealing with lately. No one would notice me eat me, even if I killed someone. Come on, don't be silly. Wait a sec. You don't mean... You're the murderer? N -n -n no, no, I'm just a poor thief! No, wait, that's not right. A thief can't... A thief can't really be poo, ha ha ha. Okay, let's see. According to Mis Mr. Delight, from his second crime on, he was following a bunch of set plans. Plans that someone had been sending to him to help him commit the heists. Do you think there's a connection between the thief and the murder, Nick? It's possible, but today's trial is a race against the clock. Huh? How come? Let's just take our time like always. I'm afraid that's not an option. Okay, so he's probably thinking, okay, at me killed the guy, but also stole the urn at the same time, but framed then Ron for it, but I somehow can't just say that and then pull evidence out of my ass. No, I have to go through this entire thing before I can do the pull ass out of, you know, pull stuff out of my ass to get at me to confess. <sighs> and I have to voice Godot again. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron tonight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. You're ready. Preparation is the last refuge of the week. Okay, settle down, everyone. Let's begin with the opening statement, Mr. Godot. Ugh, he's got the judge in the palm of his hands. Yet again. When does the prosecution not have the judge in their hands. Ron Delight is simply too young to be sent to war. That's all. I'm afraid I have no idea what that means, Mr. Godot. Hmm. Then you need to get out more, Your Honor. Life is war, but that is exactly why you must be more precise in your wording. So wait, you're saying that Ron is too young to be sent to war, and you say life is war, so you're saying Ron should die? That's all my statement means. You understand now, right? Yes. Well then, let me briefly summarize the details of this case. Wow. The judge is taking charge like he knows what's going on for a change. The victim is Ken Bullard, CEO of KB Security.
His body was found in a safe at approximately 9 a.m. on the morning of the 13th. However, the time of death was estimated as 1 a.m. of the previous day. And that's when our little lost kitten dropped the ball. That little lost kitten is, of course, the defendant. Very well then, Mr. Godot. Please call your first witness. I never drank more than 17 cups of coffee during any given trial. But the first one is always the best. Mr. Godot, your witness? Okay then, let's hear what the defendant, Mr. Rondelight, has to say for himself. The defendant? Well, Mr. Wright, does the defense have any objections? It may be a bit of a disadvantage having the defendant testify, but... I remember when Mia was defending me. She allowed me to testify so she could do the cross-examination. She put a lot of trust in me back then. Yeah, but you kind of lost that when she realized that you lied. <laughs> You've got guts, Troyd. All right then, Mr. Rondelight. Please take the stand. You did it, didn't you? Yes. What? Uh... No, 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 that's not true! For a moment there, I said we'd set the record for the shortest trial ever. <sighs> well, Mr. Delight always looks plenty guilty with that face he's making. And once he opens his big mouth, he'll probably put the last nail in his own coffin. Hmm. Very well. Now then, can you tell me something? If you didn't kill Bullard, why did you go to KB security? Well, I... that's kind of hard to say. Boy, I wish I could go home. That evening, around 1am, I went to see Mr. Bullard in his office at KB Security. The blackmail letter I got... it ordered me to go there. I'd been working for KB Security until a year ago, so I knew where his office was. Isn't your wife in the peanut gallery? 1 a.m. The exact time the murder took place. Nah, yeah, go screw yourself. <laughs> it's better today, too. Just like my destiny. Woe is me! You'd never know that from the way he's chugging it down. Oh. 1 a.m., huh? You're absolutely sure about that? Yes. That's what my watch said when I was entering the CEO's office. Uh, no. Actually, I'm not really sure. My watch was slow and my internal clock was also... That's the exact time the victim, Mr. Bullard, was murdered, correct? It's too late for a coffee date, that's for sure. Great! Godot, that's... I'm still trying to see what people like about him. It ordered you there? It was the first time I had gotten a blackmail letter that ordered me to go somewhere. Does it mean you've gotten other blackmail letters then? Oh, of course! They'd say things like, steal this or take that. Ha <laughs> why did you save those for later, Mr. Delight? Please don't say anymore. Now, what should I do? So, what did the blackmail letter in question say? It said to bring $50,000. Money, huh? Yeah. A perfect motive for committing murder. As is jealousy, as is otherwise gain. Or rage. 
Oh, but wait, wait! I never intended to pay that money anyway. Oh, is that right? After all, he had nothing to hold over my head. I had nothing to be afraid of. An important point indeed. Witness, let's hand the letter to your testimony. Yes, sir. Hm. A muddy mud skipper in outer space has a better chance of surviving than I do. All I know is the judge's voice makes me yawn. Just, what were you being blackmailed about anyway? The blackmail letter said if you don't want your identity revealed, correct? I'm sure it was referring to the whole Musk de Musk thing. But I wasn't worried. Mr. Bullard didn't have anything on me. He didn't? Anyway, I don't care what anyone says about me. Just as long as Desi believes in me. Then why does he repeatedly tell people that he is the thief and then is all... Oh god, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna try to figure him out. My eye hurts too much for this. So that's why Mr. Light didn't believe he was Musk to Musk. That's why I knew they were just hollow threats. You used to be a security chief for KB Security, right? Yes, that's right. A security chief? You? And yet, a year ago you were fired without notice. Revenge for an old grudge? A perfect motive for murder, wouldn't you say? Well... I'm kind of wondering why would you bother waiting a year to get your revenge then? This isn't good. Maybe I should change the subject? Mr. Delight, please tell us why you were fired from your job. Well... The world is filled with those who have said, I wish I had never asked that. Okay, then I take... Defendant, please answer the question. I... well... I needed money. You needed money? Um, well, you see, Bessie loves to spend it. It's kind of her hobby. Not exactly the best hobby in the world, huh, Nick? My salary wasn't nearly enough. So, I stole data from the company. Come again? Cave Security has a lot of security info on all sorts of companies. And since I was security to team chef... You stole some data and sold it. Mr. Bullet found out and I was fired immediately. What? I wish I had never asked that. I was so unable to keep it secret and made it seem like I had quit on my own. What is it, Nick? You don't look so good. Someone who brings harm to their company is fired as punishment. You'd do well to remember that. He sure told you. So you admit that you stole data from your company, is that correct? Y yes. I'm sorry. This is a very important fact. Please add it to your testimony. Oh man, this whole thing just took a big turn for the worse, crashed, and blew up. It's gonna take the jaws of life to rip this cage, case from the clutches of disaster. Why would you do something like that? Well, for Desi's hobby. What else? Wasting money, huh? It's not a waste! <laughs> so, Mr. Light doesn't know that her husband was fired, does she? So it would seem. I'm not sure what to think about couples who keep secrets like that from each other. I can't believe it. This case has gotten even Maya to think ser seriously about couples. Please try to stay focused, Mr. Wright. There wasn't much to his testimony, was there? Sounds like he's avoiding something. At least, that's what it sounds like to me. Uh-oh. I've got a bad feeling about this. We'd better be careful. What if we don't find a way to make him spill the beans? We'll never get closer to the truth. Yeah.
Welcome. <laughs> Okay, that was a wrong thing. Yeah, let's just skip that. Mr. Delight, what you said just now doesn't match what you told me yesterday. Huh? What doesn't? I think you must have been scared, very scared, of having a certain person find out your secret. Ooh. A certain person? Miss Desiree Delight, the defendant's wife. Ah, but, but I... Listen to me, my Desi, she's... Looks like if I just sit back and relax, the fun will end before it truly begins. Gadaw! Yes, we know. It was all your wife's fault. What do you mean? Mr. Delight stole company data to pay for his wife's spending habit for which he was fired. Unable to fight his own wife, someone used his dirty little secret to blackmail him. And that is how this murder came about. Ooh. No! Everything is falling nearly into place for him! D don't talk about my best Desi like that! Oh, you'll be sorry! You tell him. Well, it seems that we've learned a great deal of things here so far. What do you think, Nick? I didn't think it was possible to get so thoroughly whipped in just 20 minutes. Oh, you should get back with Francesca and she'll show you. Clearly there was sufficient motive for murder. He stole data for his wife and he killed to protect his secret. A family man who cared just a little too much. Isn't a family man someone who has children next to his wife? The motive is clear. Let's move on. <sighs> what happened at the crime scene at one in the morning, Mr. Delight? Come now, tell us. We're all ears. <sighs> I just like this guy so much. When I entered the office, there was a specific shadow, shadow there. Suddenly, I was hit on the forehead. After that, I remember being a bit dazed. Good thing there wasn't a pistol lying around. If I hadn't been wearing that, I would have been killed. When I came to, Mr. Bullet was lying there, dead. I see. Suddenly hit on the forehead, huh? I believe the detective from yesterday provided similar testimony. He said that Musk and Musk struck him on the head from behind. Of course, since Atme turned out to be the culture himself, that was all a lie. Hmm. No one's going to believe a pathetic lie like that. What are you saying? I really was attacked! We'll find out if what you say is true or not during the cross-examination. Got that, Mr. Trite. Don't go easy just because he's your client. Oh, believe me, even if he was, I would still go tough on him. You don't need to worry about that, Mr. Godot. I have faith in Ron. I know he didn't do it. Believing in your client is the only thing you have to do. Who was this suspicious Sato? Too many S sounds. If there were a thousand of me, and even if even one knew, I tell you, trust me. His dodging all of our question is not helping us with this case. Okay, then how was the victim, Mr. Bullard, at the time? 
What do you mean by how was he? Was he already dead? Was he still alive? Maybe he was the one who hit you in the first place. That's a good question. What do you think, Mr. Wright? <laughs> Forget it. Your forehead? Yes, I was hit on the forehead as soon as I entered the room. It was an amazingly fast and powerful attack. Do you remember anything about who hit you? Well, like I said, it was a fast and powerful hit. So I think I was a little dazed for a while. I don't think Mr. Delight even grasped what you were asking. I'd like to show him a fast and powerful attack myself. Maybe that would knock some sense back into him. Please, demonstrate on Maya first. That? Could you please clarify what you are referring to? Why, my Musk de Musk costume, of course. Wait just a moment. Musk de Musk? Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention before? Just to be on the safe side, I dressed as Musk de Musk. And then, I descended upon the office of the CEO of KB Security. What? Nick, did you know about this? He never told me this. I don't recall him ever mentioning it to me either. Even I didn't know that. It seems our little friend really loves to keep secrets. I'm sorry, I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. Wait. That's not right. You know how sometimes things just... Hmm. <laughs> My sixth cup of coffee is staring up at me coldly. At any rate, we can't ignore this new piece of information. Witness, please correct your testimony. Why were you dressed up as Musk de Musk? Why... Because I am Musk de Musk, of course. What are you talking about? Musk de Musk's trail is being held next door. Uh, yes, I guess so. Anyway, at that time... I thought I was being blackmailed over the Musk de Musk issue. So I thought I should go as him just to be safe. Oh boy. Let me tell you, it's a real pain to move around with that cape. That's why it took a lot longer than I'd expected. Took a lot longer? What is he talking about? Well, gee! What should I pick? I know I've been on about this before, but I hate pointless options! This game is chock full of them! Um, what do you mean by took a lot longer? Oh, opening the safe, of course. My cape got caught on the safe door, you see. This all happened when I was hiding Mr. Bullet's body. W -w -w what was that? Back up a second. Yes? You were the one that hid the body in the safe? So? Um, well, yeah. Inconceivable! Why? Just why? What reason could you have? What were we thinking? Question. When does someone toss their dirty shorts in the washing machine? Uh... When the hamper is full for about a week or longer? Uh, what? The answer is simple. When they take them off. If you don't have a hamper... As usual, I have no idea what you're saying. Do you mean that Mr. Delight hid the body because he's the murderer? Hmm. <laughs> so you're not as stupid as you look. His metaphor this time was really obscure. Mr. Wright, you don't mean that you knew about this whole safe business, do you? Oh, uh, well, yes. Why am I the only one not in the loop here? Witness, make sure you add this to your testimony. Y yes sir Uh-oh. 
Looks like a storm front is moving in over the fair weather judge. Why did you hide the body in the safe anyway? Well, because it wouldn't fit in a drawer. That's not exactly what I meant. When I saw that corpse, I kind of lost it. I thought, if they find its corpse, they'll think I did it. Hm. I think you had a simpler reason than that. It's because you killed him. That's why you spent ten minutes hiding the body. That certainly makes more sense. Mm. Wait, ten minutes? What is it, Nick? I just had a thought. Under those circumstances, would you normally try to hide the body? And spend ten whole minutes to do it? Under those circumstances? What circumstance? Oh! Hey, Nick, if you think his behavior was so strange... Why don't you present some evidence that would show just what those circumstances were? That's it. I'll take a look at the court record and present some evidence. We heard this from Mr. Delight yesterday, didn't we? There's not much in this testimony, either. I bet you he's still hiding something. I wouldn't be surprised. We'll just have to draw it out of him. I just hope he doesn't make things any more complicated. Your Honor, could you please take a look at this record? And what might this be? The record for the emergency buzzer that connects the CEO's office to the security. If the button in the office is pressed, a security team is supposed to come running. And according to this record, the buzzer was pushed once, at 1.02 a.m. What? If Mr. Rondelai truly was the murderer, he would have ran as soon as that buzzer sounded. After all, a security guard would have been headed this way. Hmm. <laughs> Let's remember who we're dealing with here. He probably had no idea there were security personnel in the building. Up until one year ago, my client was working as the chief of security. There's no way he wouldn't have known about them. But, as it turns out, the guard never came. That was nothing more than a coincidence. The fact that the guard was a pathetic loser, who had just gotten punched in the face by his ex's boyfriend, and wasn't anywhere in the vicinity was not something Mr. Delay could have known. Hmm. <laughs> Again, remember who we're dealing with here. It's a sure bet that Mr. Delay didn't even notice the buzzer was going off. This buzzer is extremely loud. There's no way he could have ignored something like that. If he had been conscious, that is. Conscience? What do you mean by that? Ugh. Fine. Let's hear your theory. Remember the defendant's testimony. The moment he entered the victim's office, someone attacked him. Mr. Delight said he felt dazed. I'm willing to wager that he was knocked unconscious for at least a few minutes. Unconscious? So he fainted? That's why Mr. Delight didn't know that the buzzer had sounded. And that's why he thought he had time to hide the body. So what are you trying to say? Mr. Delight was knocked out, and the buzzer went off soon afterwards. Now, unless my client was able to hit the buzzer while he was unconscious, it can only mean that there was another person in that room. That's right, whoever it was knocked out around the light and then pressed the buzzer. You'd think Kane Bullard would have pressed the buzzer before. Objection. This is preposterous. It was this kid. Ron Delight is the one who killed Kane Bullard. Then who pressed the buzzer? Uh, it was... 
the victim, of course. He pressed the buzzer when the defendant attacked him. He didn't die right away, he must have held on long enough to push that button. Ugh! So Ken Bullock sounded the buzzer himself. What is your opinion on this, Mr. Wright? I need to prove that the real criminal was there at the scene. But how? Can I prove that it wasn't Ken Bullard who sounded the buzzer? Uh, yes? The defense's opinion is this, Your Honor. I hate it when the text is displaying slowly. Just show me the entire text to begin with. I believe this is the piece of incontrovertible incont evidence you were looking for. The emergency buzzer? Is there some kind of clue on it? Absolutely not. Come on now. At least give some thought to what you say before opening your mouth. The fact that there are absolutely no clues is itself the clue. Now I'm the one who's clueless. This button has no fingerprints on it. If Mr. Bullet had really pressed it himself, naturally he would have left his fingerprints behind. Unless he bumped into it with his elbow, smacked it with the back of his hand, which would have might have left something there behind. Or maybe he was wearing gloves. Ron the light. Obviously wipe them off. Why would he? A guard could have come in at any moment. He touched that button. I know he did. The defendant, Mr. Delight, was dressed as Musk de Musk. And Musk de Musk always wears gloves. What reason could he possibly have had to wipe the button free of fingerprints? It would seem... I've been forced to eat crow. I wonder what blend number crow flavored coffee is. 69? However, the real killer was there at the scene. Why would that person press the emergency buzzer? Shouldn't they have run away without putting themselves in extra danger? What's with this awkward silence all of a sudden? Hmm. It looks like you're fresh out of parlor tricks. They're on to you, Nick. Just give me a minute to collect my thoughts. The real culprit, culprit killed Mr. Bullet around 1 a.m. And Mr. Delight just happened to waltz in when the murder was taking place. Oh, that was Maya. The fuck, who cares? Nobody cares what Maya has to say. The killer clobbered Mr. Delight, and then sounded the buzzer. Even though security was supposed to respond right away if the buzzer was pressed. Security was supposed to respond? Time's up, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you have to say. Very well, then. You've got some guts. I like that an opponent. Where did the real killer sound the emergency buzzer? The killer knew that if they pressed that button, a guard would come running. And that was exactly what they wanted. Do you mean to say the killer caught the guard on purpose? Yes. Although, as it turned out, he never showed up. Because he was getting his clock cleaned at the time. Hmm. <laughs> What a touching story. You're saying the killer had a change of heart and called the guard to turn himself in? No, I'm not. And anybody with half a brain would realize this already. When that buzzer sounded, there were three people in that office. The victim, Kane Bullard, who was already dead. The defendant, Ron Delight, who was out cold. And the third person, the real killer. Hypothetically, yes. Now then, 
In this situation, if the real killer made an escape, what would happen? The only ones left in the room would be the victim and Rhonda Light. And, and if any security guards came running in at that time, they would think that I was the murderer. Yes, that was precisely the real killer's objective. To frame Rhonda Light for the murder. I'd just like to mention something which I was wanted to mention actually a while ago, but I always forgot. I actually draw comic strips of the cases with me as a legal aid actually in there. And I can tell you... I would... I think almost any person who is more of an amateur of the law than I am and I'm not really that much of an amateur at the law, would be a better defense legal aid, or just overall a legal aid, than the ones in the games. Maya, Pearls, Trucy in the next game, Kay has no purpose at all in this game when she is there, and Emma in the DS game. They all are... Okay, Emma might be the closest to actually having some purpose there, but otherwise they're all shit. They're shit at being a defense legal aid. They have no idea about the law. K is the worst, because, okay, Maya doesn't know about the law, and, but I am willing to say that she serves some purpose to the plot. K doesn't serve any purpose to the plot. So really... My comic strips would be hell of a lot funny, actually. I could make more jokes about this game in the comic strips, which I do. I just wanted to point that out. Because really, comic strips, parodies, that's the only way you can actually enjoy this game. Because it's so stupid. I've been made to eat my words once again. Actually, you've been made to do a spit take. With a cup of coffee. Well, we can't all do it while eating watermelon and drinking sangria. M Mr. Wright, who was it? Who was it that tried to frame me? Wait. Wait a second. I'm the one and only mus musks. Nick, you mean the real killer is... We're going to drag that person in here right now. But, but, who is it? I don't have any solid proof yet, but think about it. The killer knew Mr. Delight's identity, and they also knew that he had been called to KB security that night. So the killer used him to execute a well-crafted plan to murder Kane Bullard. Let's hear your accusation, Mr. Wright. Who was it that framed Mr. Darren Delight for the murder of Kane Bullard? Detective Luke Atney. He's the only one who could've done it. Ace Detective Luke Atney? You mean, Masked Mask did it? Your Honor, the person being tried in the court next to us is not Masked Mask at all. He is, in actuality, the true murder of Kane Bullard. Theft and murder. Which is a more serious crime? They're not even close. Murder is the more serious crime, of course. It's a capital crime put subject to a capital punishment. Please remember the trial for yesterday, if you would. When Luke Atme confessed, there was a huge commotion in the courtroom. Of course, a famous detective was unmasked as... Well, Musk the Musk. Instead of being convicted of murder, he was found guilty of grand larceny. Uh, larceny. That was his true objective all along. To be found guilty? Musk the Musk had the perfect alibi for when the murder took place. He was stealing the urn at Lordy Taylor. In other words, 
being found guilty as Musk to Musk was Luke Atme's airtight, watertight, and unassailable alibi. A guilty verdict as an alibi? By the way, our defendant was trying to do the same thing. You know, it's almost time. For what? For Luke Atme's verdict. It was a pretty simple trial, after all. If we're going to stop this trial and stall that one, we need to do it now. Of course, that's assuming you have proof that the detective was the one who committed the murder. Mr. Luke Atme's trial has indeed attracted the attention of the entire country. If he were to intrude and fail to provide adequate proof of his true crime, Mr. Delight would be left with no grounds for appeal. Are you even saying that anybody here convicted actually gets an appeal? A bet's only good when your life's the ante. Mr. Wright, I, I believe in you! Mr. Delight? So, so, please, I'm begging you! Thanks, but my decision will determine the rest of your life. Can I really risk your life like this? I'm gonna strangle you with your own bosom. What was that? What are boobs doing in my mind? They have no place there. Don't stray, Phoenix. For your client, take the path of trust. That voice, it, it sounds like... Mia! Your Honor, the defense requests an immediate recess. Hmm. So that's your answer, huh? Very well. I've decided as well. This court will now take a 20 minute recess. Mr. Wright, when we return, please summon Mr. Lugatni to the stand. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> well, sir, Detective Atme? <laughs> I have to say, Mr. Payne. You performed splendidly. Oh no, sir, Detective at me! You were the one who... That's enough. This court sees no reason to really prolong this trial. This court finds a defendant look at me. Wait! Don't hand down your verdict yet, please! Well, well, sir lawyer. Welcome to my courtroom. Who's this hoser, eh? My name is Phoenix Wright, attorney at law, and I wish to file an accusation against this man, Luke Atme. Accusation? You accuse Musk the Musk? That man is not Musk the Musk. He's just a ruthless murderer. What? Actually, I think I'm just going to continue. Can't be that much longer, right? My sis? I could have sworn I heard Mia's voice. So then she's still alive inside your heart. Nikki boy! Oh, Mr. Light. Is it true that Detective Atme is the real killer? To be honest, we don't have any definite proof. But he's the only one who could have done it. Except maybe for a random passerby robbery killing him. But of course we know that it can't be anybody but him. Because reasons. Not to mention, we don't exactly know his motive. I mean, why would Detective Atney want to kill Candle Bullard? Oh, it's almost time. Better get back to the courtroom. I need to find some solid proof. And it's gotta happen sooner rather than later. Hmm. 
Now then, this court is back in session. Mr. Luke at me, please take the stand. Well, well. How do you do, Sir Lawyer? I never would have thought to see you acting so recklessly. I couldn't let them hand down your verdict just yet. Not when it would have given you your perfect alibi. An alibi by the name of Musk de Musk. I'm sorry. I'm afraid even the great Luke Atme has no idea what you mean. Of course, I have been in the court next courtroom ever since 10 o'clock this morning. I'm afraid there's no way I could know what's been going on in here. You've been in the defendant's seat all day long, correct? Being tired, try this mask to mask. Indeed. It's truly child's play to fool the ignorant masses. Not only did the poor fools ask me to protect their valuables, they even gave me a generous reward upon returning their own property to them. Take this red diamond ring that sparkles upon my divine finger, for example. So you continue to insist that you are, in fact, Musk or Musk? Of course. Very well then, look at me. Let us begin with this simple question. On October 12th at 1am, Kane Bullet was murdered. Where were you at the time? One without knowledge lacks even the knowledge that he should be ashamed of himself. But don't worry, I will not hold it against you, Sir Judge. Thanks. The night of the murder. Speak. We're all ears. As you wish, Sir Prosecutor. I was stealing the urn as musk to musk, just as I announced I would. I had more than enough time to prepare. It was a pathetically easy job. A photograph contains no words, but in this case, one turned out to be my witness. The time at which the camera captured musk to musk was the same time as the murder. It seems the main point of discussion will be this photo of the crime scene. Everything else up until now was all part of his plan. There has to be a secret to this picture as well. Even the great Musk de Musk cannot be in two places at once. Now then, if you'll excuse me, I have a verdict to receive. Unfortunately, Mr. Atme, we still have to do your cross-examination. A fool is too foolish to know that he is a fool. Translation, he would be happy. I think he's trying to say that you're full of it, Nick. Thank you, Captain Obvious. The only thing that's full of it is his alibi. So this photograph is proof, correct? Indeed it is. And the man in the and the man in the photo is certainly wearing a mask. That is why I am called Musk de Musk. But conveniently, that also means that there is no way to tell who this really is. What do you mean? Objection. <laughs> Are you saying that this is not, in fact, Luke at me? That it could be an accomplice dressed up as Musk de Musk to create an alibi? Oh ho! What an interesting idea! Are you saying that I, Lone Wolf Luke, had an accomplice? If Luke Atten was at KB security during the murder, then the Musk the Musk in this picture has to be a fake. Then there really was an accomplice! But right now, I have no idea who it was. Mm -hmm. I don't have any idea right now either. Baseless objections are just what that guy wants. There's got to be another way. And I'm going to find it. I believe Adrian Andrews hired you at one point. That's right. That was over 20 days ago, if I'm not mistaken. You sent the calling card to Lordly Taylor 10 days before the heist. That would mean you sent out the card after you began your security watch, right? Indeed. There was no reason why I couldn't do both jobs at once. It was a perfect opportunity to steal my latest target. 
You truly are evil, aren't you? Yes, evil is what I am. Hey, Nick, isn't there something odd about this? Huh? Well, Detective Adamy was always proud of his ace detective skills, right? But if the urn was stolen from Lord Taylor, why was the only one watching it? He'd have no way to maintain his perfect ass detective persona. You know, that's true. It is kind of odd. So by photograph, you mean this piece of evidence here. Is that correct? Indeed it is. That is it. The very thing that proves I committed the crime. The very thing that proves you committed the crime. When you think about it, it's really odd. You say that almost as if you had this picture taken on purpose. Objection. He was simply caught by the very camera that he had set up. We all have days like that. Indeed. It turned out that there was no such thing as a perfect crime after all. Life is truly an ironic thing. A sad blue memory. It looks like I'd better gather more information for now. If he's truly the killer, there's got to be something phony in that photo. Oh. I seem to have presented it at the wrong part. Oopsie! About the camera that took this photograph. Oh, come now. It's all to clear what you're thinking. Huh? You think I altered the timestamp on the photograph, don't you? I'm afraid that's impossible. The camera was set up by Lorley Taylor, and on top of that, it was Lorley Taylor's staff that printed that picture's data. Unfortunately for the defense, there's no way that picture could have been altered. I see. It looks like I'd better find something else that could be suspicious. So, this alibi is false? It has to be, or he couldn't have killed Mr. Bullard at KB security. But I'm not really spotting anything unusual. There are two possibilities. Either the musk the musk in the photo is fake, or the photo itself is. Lorley Taylor provided that camera. There's no way I could have tampered with it. That means I could not have killed Ken Bullard, unless I had an accomplice. Come on, think long and hard about that night. The basement warehouse and the picture that supposedly captures it. It's got to be here. Is there something funny about this picture? Are you implying that this picture is a fake? You bet I am. There's definitely something strange about this picture. We took a look around the basement warehouse that night before the theft took place. And there's something in this photo that doesn't match my memory of that night. Well then, let's hear what you have to say. What about this photograph do you find funny? The funny part is right here. Wait, this... This is a bloodstain. 
Oh, blood! Now this case is getting interesting. Uh, not exactly. The stain is actually pink paint. Oh, just paint. And peach colored at that. From blood to peaches. The Dutch sure loves going on as wild tangents. The problem with this photograph is not the paint. The problem is when you consider the layout of the basement warehouse. It turns out that something that should be there is nowhere to be seen. Well, Mr. Wright, what is supposed to be in this picture instead of the paint stains? The supervisor of the treasure exhibit said the following. Well, there's a good reason for that. On the day of the crime around noon, that golden statue just happened to arrive from the mountain training hall. I realized that the statue would be the perfect size for carving up the paint stains. That's why I put it where you first saw it. I myself was there the night the theft took place, and saw the statue in that spot. If this picture was truly taken on that night, then that statue should have been there. But when I went there the day after the theft, that statue of the old bag was sitting in the corner. Perhaps it was somehow pushed there accidentally? Your Honor, the statue is slightly larger than yourself, and quite heavy. It would take more than an accidental push to move at that distance. Hmm. In that case, can you prove it? Can you give us the rhyme and reason as to why that statue was moved that night? Can you do it, Nick? Never mind who moved it. The real question is why did they move it? Well, Mr. Wright, I hope you're prepared with your answer. Who was the one that moved the golden statue on the night of the crime? The one who moved the statue is none other than look at me. Come now, sir lawyer. There you go again on one of your strange delusions. Mr. Wright, what basis do you have for your strange delusions? It's very simple. The witness was the only one in the basement warehouse that night. That is indeed very simple. However, why would I want to move a heavy golden statue? The reason for moving the golden statue. Here's where our battle really begins. Well, Mr. Wright, what reason do the witness have to move that statue? The reason can be found here in this photograph. Look at me. You pretended to be Musk to Musk. To create an alibi by showing you were at Lord Lee Taylor that night. But this photograph contains a single fatal flaw. If the statue had been there, your lie would be exposed like cheap film at a drugstore. That is why you moved the statue. A single fatal flaw? Interesting theory. Please enlighten us. Well, and the paint stains. The paint stains are visible, that's the problem. <sighs> As the Yiddish proverb goes, a half-truth is a whole lie. Keep lying like this and you'll be the one on trial. Oh man, now they're calling me a liar. The question is, why was the statue moved, right? There was some reason the culprit didn't want the statue in the picture. At least, that's what I thought. Naturally, the line in this photo is the timestamp. What do you mean? I'll tell you exactly what I mean. On the night in question, Luke Atme went to KB security and murdered King Bullard. Therefore, it's obvious. It would have been impossible for him to have been at Lloyd Taylor at this time. But what does it have to do with the statue being moved? Remember, if you will, Your Honor, when was the statue placed besides the warehouse door? Well, 
The statue was taken down to the warehouse on the day of the crime, and it was placed there in order to cover up the paint. Exactly. Lou Gaffney had already decided on the time when he was going to kill the victim, and so, in order to create an alibi for that time, he took this picture days before the murder took place. Of course, the statue hadn't yet been brought down to the basement warehouse yet. Ooh. So, on the day of the crime, Mr. Adney must have been quite nervous. As nervous as a long-tailed cat in a rocking chair factory, so to speak. Why? Because something that wasn't supposed to be there had been brought down and placed where it wasn't supposed to be. And that is why Luke Adney had to move the statue on the night of the murder. He did it to make the room match with the way it had been in the photo. One moment, Your Honor. Have you forgotten this? What is that? The data for the basement warehouse computer. According to this, the camera did indeed go off on the night of the crime. It's true that the camera had been set up by the Lord de Taylor's staff. However, the program used to manage that data was yours. That alone would have allowed you to tamper with the data. Godot, I warned you about making me wait. Now put that coffee down. My eleventh cup. I've promised to drink no more than seventeen during a trial. Which means, I'm still good till the last drop. However, the defense is a very good point. A good point. So what? We are all but travelers on a road of points. I think you've got your points mixed up with your other points. So you say this photograph was taken ahead of time, and that the statue was moved in order to make it match. That's a very interesting idea. However, there's one point that can't be denied. Which is? That it's only a possibility. That was enough to get all the other guys convicted in previous cases. So it shouldn't be that much of a point here. Men that are trapped by the chains of maybe can never reach their dreams. That's very true. No, wait, don't fall for that, Your Honor. Mr. Damask. Yes. If there's no funny business in your actions as Musk Damask, there should be no problem with you telling us your strategy. So let's hear it. Yes. Please provide this court with your testimony about your plan to steal the sacred urn. I first received a request from Lord Tail about 20 days ago. The urn was placed in a dark box, and Zabari, it was then sent to the warehouse. Hence, I was actually unable to see the urn for myself until the day of the crime. I knew it was an extremely valuable treasure, so I sent my card 10 days beforehand. I then handled security by myself to ensure that my crime would go smoothly. At last, I held the urn in my hands for the first time at 1am on October 12th. That's pretty much all stuff we heard before, isn't it? Yeah, but we will find the truth hidden in the nuggets of new information he gave. You sure there are any mistakes this time? Zvari! Very well then.
Mr. Atme, if you really are Musk de Musk, then you also wrote this calling card, correct? But of course! Is there a problem with that calling card? Allow me to read a passage from the calling card that Musk de Musk had written. Take good care of the speckled urn. Now, the speckled here surely refers to this pink pattern on the sacred urn. Yes, that is true. But so what? Truth be told, there is no way that Musk de Musk could have known about this pattern. What do you mean? This pink spotted pattern on the urn is actually nothing more than paint stains. Paint stains? And these stains did not appear until after the urn had been taken to Lordly Taylor. I'm not finding this joke to be very funny, Mr. Trite. The day that the sacred urn was taken to the warehouse, the urn was broken due to human error, or should I say an error-prone human. And that's when the pink paint got onto the urn. You can't be serious. And yet this calling card clearly mentions the paint pattern. Which means, Detective Atme had seen this learn long before the crime ever took place. In fact, he saw it when the fake po photo was taken. And because this photo is a fake, your alibi for the night of murder no longer holds water. Witness, do you have anything to say for yourself? Alright, that did it. He's broken. Nick, I think it's still a little early for a victory pose. Huh? Hmm. That's so sad. No one has any conviction these days. Conviction, you say? Yesterday, we all decided unanimously that this man was Musk to Musk. And now we're calling him a murderer. You don't think we're being a tad fickle? It never was a problem in the previous cases. That's a good point. No way, don't fall for that too, Your Honor. You say that Luke Atme was the one who killed Kane Bullard? Then let me ask you this, why would he do that? <laughs> An excellent point. Motive, Mr. Wright. Motive. Might you my merry murderous motive manifest? Nick, he's getting his second wind. If, if he prepared an alibi and pinned his crime around the light as you say, he must have had a very strong motive for murder. The only one with any motive we've seen is around the light. Isn't that right, Detective? Indeed. According to my own research, the boy's motive is clear. Without a motive, it's nearly impossible to prove guilt in a murder case. I disagree. Now then, maybe you can enlighten us to what the defendant's motives were. Thank you, Sir Oldtimer. They're doing everything they can to make Ron look suspicious. Despite our lack of hard information, this may be our only chance. I, Luke Atme, had no points to, of contact with the victim whatsoever. Kane Bullard decided to investigate Musk de Musk and simply mistook who he was. It was Mr. Bullard who wrote the blackmail letter and sent it to Ron Delight. And it was again Mr. Bullard who harbored a grudge against Mr. Delight for his betrayal. Mr. Bullet's mistake is quite excusable. The defendant truly believes he is Musk to Musk. That is why Mr. Delight sought fit to call kill Kane Bullard. Truly a tragedy. So the victim Kane Bullard blackmailed the defendant? Doesn't that, wasn't that already established? A handwritten test confirms that Mr. Bullard was indeed the one who wrote the letter. What?
And who in the world is going to prove that? I will. After doing a thorough background check of Detective Atme and Kane Bullard, we were unable to find any links between them. It's all in the report. Perhaps they were connected through their work? They were both involved in security. Nope. That was blunt. In any case, the only one with a motive was Mr. Delight. Miss Duck? That's right. Miss Duck. From the Old Norse, Mistaka, meaning to take an error. Uh, that wasn't what I meant. Just who did the victimist take Musk to Musk to be? Why, the answer is obvious. Ronda Light, of course. Boy, I'd like to wipe that smug look off this guy's face. Why would the victim mistake the defendant for Musk to Musk? Don't you already know that? Zvari! Take a look at this newspaper. Oh, that's the famous Tear of Emanon, a magnificent jewel. That photo shows a magnificent detective as well, does it not? Furthermore, it also shows an ugly guard, namely the defendant. The defendant? The victim clearly misread this article and... Zavari! He got the wrong impression. The impression that this ugly security guard was, in fact, Musk to Musk. Is he... That was an unusual, unusually reasonable detection. You mean this blackmail letter right here? It says bring fifty thousand dollars. And the handwriting is, without a doubt, the victim's. There's no mistake. We have an official report to prove it. But I didn't see an address C on this letter anywhere. An address C. This letter was discovered in Ron Delight's apartment, and Mr. Delight did show up at the designated place and time. The fact that there is no address C is irrelevant. I wonder... What's up, Nick? I just had a thought. What if that blackmail letter wasn't meant for Mr. Delight? Whoa! Do you have any evidence of that? For some reason I just can't shake the feeling... That there's something not quite right about this blackmail letter. Well, everyone, are you quite satisfied? Well, if you're so sure, let's take a look at the letter. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Detective at me? Well, if it's just a few, I guess it's alright. When you said that this letter was addressed to Ron Delight, I couldn't help but notice one major contradiction. C contradiction? I don't know where a walking contradiction like you gets off saying something like that. You're one to talk! At times like these, men are made to express themselves with their fists. Why don't you show us what you've got there, Junior? Indeed. Time to man up, Mr. Wright. Show us the contradicting evidence in the content of the blackmail letter. A little two-one punch like that wouldn't even faze me. I think you mean one-two punch. Mr. Wright, try thinking it through a little more before finding faults with others. Ow! I sure felt that punch, Your Honor. <sighs> the problem is the color.
guess I have to show the letter again. Take a good look at the newspaper clipping. It contains a picture of the tear of Emanon, the stolen jewel. What about it? The problem is this co jewel's color. Color? I'm not much for discussing color myself. According to the clipping, the color of the stolen jewel was blue. However, in the blackmail letter, a totally different jewel is mentioned. I'll take that red diamond you received the other day. Red? Which means, the red diamond described in the blackmail letter is not the tear of Emanon that Musk to Musk stole at all. Objection. And your point is, Mr. Trite? So you are trying to say that this blackmail letter was intended for someone else? That is what you're trying to say, right, Trite? That is what you're trying to say, right, Mr. Wright? Well, that is what you're trying to say, right, Nick? Yes. This is who Kane Boulder was actually blackmailing. Naturally, it was you, Detective Atme. Do you have some sort of basis for that claim? You have been personally involved in every single Musk to Musk case. And in the last case, you recovered what was stolen and received a jewel as your reward. A jewel? By the way, we find out in the next case that Godot cannot see red. Does that mean that to him, Atme's hands look empty? Probably the one wrapped conspicuously around your finger. That red diamond ring. Meh. That is the diamond referred to in the letter, which means that Kent Bullard wrote that letter in order to blackmail you. Objection. It seems you've gone too far with your childish pranks, Mr. Trite. I don't like the way he said that. Kane Bullard blackmailing Luke at me. Are you for real? Yes, I am. Nick, come on, stand up to him! That adds me this. The blackmail letter contains the following passage. If you don't want your identity revealed to the world. Yes, it certainly does. Kane Bullard threatened to make Luke at me the identity public knowledge. An identity he wanted to keep secret. So just what was that identity? Atme killed Kane Bullard because he was afraid of a secret becoming known. What was the identity he wanted to keep secret? This is what it all comes down to, Nick! The identity Luke Atme wanted so desperately to keep secret was the identity as... Hmm... Which one to pick? Luke at me was a blackmailer. Objection. Hey now, isn't that a little different from what you've been saying? You said that Kane Bullard was the one blackmailing Luke at me. So? It doesn't mean he was automatically blackmailing, you know, Bullard back. Are you saying that at me was blackmailing someone on top of that? You have to admit that does sound a little odd. It's not odd. It's the only thing that makes any sense. Ken Bullard was blackmailing Luke at me. But Ron Delight was also being blackmailed by a certain someone. So did you start to receive blackmail letters starting after this incident? Yes, just a few days after the Tear of Emanon heist. After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. I received plans from some very kind person. Incredibly detailed plans. Detailed plans? 
In which case, that would mean that Round Delight was actually Musk to Musk. That is what we are claiming. Someone else came up with the plans and had Mr. Delight steal his targets for him. And that someone was none other than Luke at me. Shh! Silence! <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. What is? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. Careless, with the tendency to jump to the conclusions. Am I wrong? <laughs> How did you... You say that I, Luke at me, was Black Miller Girl on Delight? In which case, I would naturally know all about his relation to Musk to Musk. Well, yes. Rondelite started receiving plans from a second crime onward, correct? Which means I learned of his identity when he committed that first crime. Good point. You certainly couldn't have blackmailed him otherwise. In that case, let's see some hot, bitter evidence. During the first crime, how did Luke at me know that Rondelite was Musk to Musk? I think I see it. See what? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. It gets into lots of mischief trying to be the center of attention. What do you mean? This newspaper clipping. It has a picture of you and Ron Delight in his guard uniform. It seems that Mask to Mask didn't just disappear into thin air. He just took off his outfit and hid it in a bucket. That... that sounds far too stupid to be true. Correct. With tricks like that, he couldn't fool a baby, let alone an ace detective. And that's when you figured it out, Mr. Atme. That's when you learned that under his mask, Musk to Musk was really wrong to light. What? Wasn't he supposed to be Musk and Musk? Not only that, it looks like he wasn't even an ace detective. I can't believe it, he was just a slimy blackmailer. What a fraud, trying to pass himself off as an ace detective. Why you? How dare you expose me like that? Why I... I mean, I've never blackmailed anyone in my life. I am a famous and proud ace detective. And also Musk to Musk. Why can't you understand that? I'm afraid you are neither a proud thief, nor an ace detective. You're a blackmailer and a murderer. That is your true identity. Why, you? How dare you dare Tim Hudson and Gusu ever fall into all this? Why don't you try something else with the big author here's your first I didn't know if you could correct my genius. Are we done yet? It would seem we finally got into the real answer. That was quite a performance by Mr. Atme. Bailiff, please prepare a cell for Mr. Atme. Objection. Asshole. The hammer that strikes too fast has no time to aim. What do you mean? I am already prepared to deliver my sentence. Allow me to say one thing. I will be the one to judge. You don't get much more in your face than that. It appears that your claws went quite sharp enough, Mr. Trout. Which you... It's true that you've proven a lot of things. Things like Luke at me was a filthy blackmailer. And that he wasn't at Lordly Taylor the night of the murder. That's right. That's why he's the one who killed Mr. Bolt. But... There's still one thing you have yet to prove. What's that? Just because he wasn't at the warehouse doesn't mean he wasn't at the murder scene. Therefore, if you can't prove that this pitiful excuse for a man was a KB security, then I don't see how a verdict can be delivered. No way! This 
is it. This is the final round. I've got to prove that Admin was a Butler's officer that night. But, but can you really prove that? That's long enough, Mr. Trite. I want to hear your answer. That night, Luke Admin was at KB Security and the defense... I... I can't prove it. Just as I thought. But, if we hear more of Detective Atme's testimony... Jackson. Unfortunately, that's as far as you go, Mr. Troy. What do you mean? I won't allow for any more testimony. That's what I mean. <sighs> Nobody should care what the prosecution wants. What? Have you forgotten? Lugatni is here after we interrupted his own trial. And you have failed to prove that he committed the murder. I think it's time for this witness to return to his own trial. And face his guilty verdict as Musk to Musk. No. Well now, Sir Lawyer. It seems that love wins out in the end after all. I am the Ace Detective as well as Musk to Musk. My verdict will verify that. Just as Ronda Lights will verify that he's the true murderer. Has this world never heard of falsely convicted? I declare that with the full force of my ace detectiveness. Don't give up now, Nick! We still have tomorrow! We can look for my evidence and... By then it'll be too late. Huh? Why? Double Jeopardy. One of the basic rules of any court of law. You don't have any basic rules! Double Jeopardy? Should a defendant be tried and found innocent in court, that defendant cannot be tried again for the same crime. This is a fundamental rule of all courts. And it applies to this witness as much as it applies to anyone else. What?! Okay. It would be nice to have a backlog, but whatever. Here it says, if the defendant is accused of a crime and is found innocent of a crime, they cannot be tried for the same case again. That is very true. But this guy is a witness, not the defendant in this case. So really, up to now, he's not officially accused. So... Double Jeopardy doesn't apply here. He's a witness, not the defendant. If we want him to get double, double Jeopardy, we would have to officially accuse him of the crime and get him into a trial where he is tried for the murder. And then, if we were to find him innocent, then he would be incapable of being found guilty again, or being tried again, despite maybe getting new evidence. Unless the evidence is really groundbreaking. So... This is just like the other two cases in the series, where they tried to put real-life law into this game, and it fails. Because for one, in 1-4, the content of court thread, it's a real thing, yes, but it was poorly executed. Here it doesn't work, because this is a witness and not a defendant. In the other case where it happens, it is the evidence law. And I will have my fair share to say about that when I get to play 1-5 later on. So really? This doesn't work. Mr. Atme will be found guilty in a matter of minutes. Guilty as Musk to Musk, which means... He will be innocent as far as the murder of Kent Bullard is concerned. 
no, that really shouldn't work. I'm not 100% clear if you can get somebody guilty for something that supposedly takes place for something he was already found guilty of at a different location. But I am going to ask about that. So I will hopefully give you the answer to that in the next video, although I can honestly say the double jeopardy doesn't work here! No way! The fact that you were unable to prove Mr. Atme's guilt of that crime here means that he will never again be trying his Ken Bullet's murderer. I will set your beard on fire. And... Wow, somebody didn't shout hold it. Now there's nothing I can do to possibly win. Even if Ron's co proclaimed to be innocent, the real killer Luke at me will go free. Oh, for the love of crap, let him go to jail as a thief. Then when he gets out, hire Shelley to kill her to kill him. Problem solved! You have cross-examined every statement the witness had made here today. And as long as there is no more testimony, I am afraid I have to declare that there will be no further questioning of this witness. Are there any objections? I object to this! Mostly because, by God, I hate you all. Then I hereby end the cross-examination of Luke Atme. I think I see it. Your Honor, when you were a child... When you were in a child?! Oh my god! The judge is a pedophile! This is terrible! has poor hearing, and often makes mistakes as a result. How did you... Phoenix, raise your head up high. Have you forgotten what I used to tell you? A lawyer is someone who smiles, no matter how bad it gets. That voice... no way. Long time to no see, Phoenix. Mia! This is the true power of the Kurain channeling technique. I know that it's really Maya who's standing before me, but right now she's my mentor, Mia Fey. Now, let's do this. But there's nothing more we can do, Mia. Without any more testimony, I can't cross examine. Not yet. The testimony's not over yet. What do you mean? Your Honor, just now you said something very interesting. You have cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today. Yes, that's true, but... Unfortunately, Your Honor, you're forgetting something. Earlier, after the last cross-examination, this witness made a number of remarks. Well, now, Sir Lawyer, seems that love wins out in the end after all. I am the Ace Detective as well as Musk to Musk. My verdict will verify that. Just as Ron Delights will verify that he is the true murderer. I declare that with the full force of my ace detectiveness. Yes, but these comments appear to have no importance What's Very well. Then we shall prove their importance by a cross-examination. At any rate, as long as the witness has made these remarks, we, the defense, assert our right to question them. Is that our right with you, prosecutor? It is something the matter, Mr. Godot? Nothing. Oh, Sir Lawyer, it looks like you're one step too late. If you think such falsehoods will do anything to me, look at- Let's hear it. Huh? It's true that the witness made some remarks. So then, let's hear this last bit of cross-examination. Mr. Godot, what are you- very well, then look at me. I'll allow the defense to cross-examine your early remarks. The defense would like to hear why you declared the defendant to be the true murderer. 
So please, give us one last bit of testimony. I... Uh... Phoenix, this is it. This is our absolutely last chance. Yes, Chief. Indeed, it is true that I was not at Lordy Taylor. I had to leave to see about another vitally important job request. I had known about the date beforehand, so I had this photograph readied. My brilliant deduction was what informed me that the true culprit was around the light. And thanks to the keycard and wallet, it was ambiently clear that he was there. I was also able to make a deduction from the buzzer, which only sounded once. The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? The victim would have left prints if he sounded it, which means the killer sounded it. Mr. Delight was wearing his Mask to Musk outfit, which is why he left no prints. And the blackmail letter? The victim likely just mistook the color of the jewel. Zabari! Therefore, all the evidence points to that poor boy. This testimony actually seems to hold up pretty well. The witness's early remarks do not appear to have been hastily prepared. All of his points have been explained and none of them seem to contradict anything. But of course. But how did you know about the emergency buzzer? The police investigation documents went directly through me. And I always look over all the documents. It's elementary, Sir Lawyer. <laughs> Are you going to make even more trouble for us now, Sir Lawyer? I will not allow any of your usual shenanigans, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. We cannot postpone Lugatmi's trial any longer. This is your last chance. You know... I would actually take the last chance and one only option seriously if it didn't happen every case. Well, Phoenix? There isn't any evidence that contradicts with that testimony. So it would seem. What do you mean, so it would seem? Listen, Phoenix. Pointing out contradictions doesn't always mean you have to present evidence, does it? At any rate, this is our last chance. If you can't point out a case breaking contradiction, you lose. That's all there is to it. Cup number 17. The last cup. It seems like the time has come to put an end to this trial. I have to find a fatal contradiction in this testimony. And I need to point it out without presenting evidence. Which means all I can do is point the contradictory remark and press it. Remember, you only get one chance. You know, I would like to finish this case and already show the problem if people would stop talking all the time. Mr. Atme, about this last remark. Objection. You still don't get it, do you, Trite? This isn't the time to be pressing the witness on every little statement. I'm afraid you're the one who still doesn't get it, Mr. Godot. What? Mr. Atme, it seems you have finally admitted that you were in the CEO's office on the night of the murder. How can you say that? Let's review your testimony, shall we, Mr. Atme? The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? Mr. Delight was wearing his Musk de Musk outfit. Is that correct? Indeed, that's what I said. My deductions are absolutely foolproof. More like your deductions prove that you're a fool. I'm sorry, whatever do you mean? For some reason, I'm starting to get really thirsty. When exactly do we learn the fact that Rondelite was dressed as Musk to Musk when he went to the scene of the crime? That was... Um, it was just a few hours ago. Back when my sex cup was looking at me with a cold stare. Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention it before? I'm sorry, I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. 
That's right. The defendant had yet to tell anyone else this fact before this morning. Therefore, the only people who should have known this are those who have been watching this trial. Do you understand now, Detective Atney? There is no way that you should have known about that! You were in the next courtroom being tried as Musk to Musk. So then enlighten us, just how did you know about that piece of information? Well... Come on, this detective must have known about it. He probably had plenty of chances to find it out beforehand. And it's those chances that I want to discuss next. That night, Mr. Delight was wearing his Musk to Musk outfit. There is one and only one way for Detective Atme to have found that out. Only one? One way, you say? Please remember, if you will, Mr. Delight's testimony. When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. I still can't say suspicious shadow. Ugh, too many S sounds. For a second, my client witnessed the real killer. But Mr. Delight never saw him. There's no way to tell whether or not the real killer was Luke Atney. It's with that statement that I'll turn this case on its head. Just what are you implying? Mr. Delight saw the real killer, correct? Now if you turn that statement around, it stands to fall that the real killer had also seen Ron Delight. Impossible. Oh no, totally him! I never would have guessed it from that suspicious pose! Detective Atme, you saw Musk the Musk at the murder scene that night. You saw him when you killed Kane Bullard and assaulted Ron Delight. That was the only way you could have known what Ron was wearing. Take a good look, everyone! Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself! Here I am, the tragic clown! This is the same that you gave yesterday. But, I think there's a little more meaning behind it this time. What an awfully complicated incident. Kane Bullet was blackmailing Luke at me, who was in turn blackmailing Ron Delight. And upon killing his blackmail, Luke at me tried to frame Ron Delight. He then claimed to be guilty as Musk and Musk in order to escape his true crime. And to that end, he came up with this plan. To use the double jeopardy rule when making his alibi. Um... At any rate, it would seem we finally found the truth. Excuse me. I came perilously close to besmooching the record of an innocent young man. Besmooching him with the title of murderer. Don't ignore me! Oh, I didn't realize you were there. Why wouldn't he be? Um, about the verdict. I know. You never committed any murder. That's right. I'm so glad you understand that. But, I am... Um, I really am Musk to Musk! Huh? So, thanks for the trial yesterday. I'm innocent now, right? Uh... What was it you said? Double Jeopardy? Now that you mention it... I've been careless. Careless? What do you think, Mia? As the defendant says, the rule of double je jeopardy is absolute. A defendant can never be tried twice for a crime in which he was once found innocent. Okay, Ron was found innocent of the murder of the sacred urn. He didn't steal that to begin with, so he was innocent. 
so he cannot be tried again for the theft of the sacred urn. He still can be tried for the Tear of Amanon, the Crown of Whatever, and the painting of this, that, and whatever he took. And he can still be tried for that. He still followed... You know, he followed somebody's plan, but he still stole things, so he can't be tried for that. So really, Double Jeopardy still doesn't keep Ron out of jail completely, yes, for being Musk the Musk. Then, Musk the Musk is really innocent? For now. It would seem so. For now. Now then, let's court fancy defendant. Boy, this is really lucky. Wait, uh, yeah. That isn't so good after all. You see, the thing is, I still must get you. You did it, Nick. Thanks, Mia. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yes. It's because Maya doesn't call me much these days. Oh. I'm just joking, Phoenix. Don't take everything so seriously. But on the other hand, Maya, she seems kind of lost these days. You mean about becoming the master of the Kuhlheim Channeling School? Becoming the master means saying goodbye to our mother. You mean Misty Fay? Watch over her, will you, Phoenix? Of course. Well then, see you around. Mia. Oh, Mr. Wright! Um, I... I don't know what to say. Congratulations, Mr. Delight. Th thank you so much! Uh, no, wait. Nothing really matters anymore now that all of this is... Come on, just be happy already! Maya... You've been cleared of the murder charges and got off as musk to musk to boot! But, in exchange, I lost everything. Huh? What do you mean? Stealing security information from KB Security, becoming Musk the Musk. I did it all for one reason. For her. You mean your wife, Desiree? She hates criminals more than anything. Come to think of it, she was once held hostage by some robbers, wasn't she? She always said how she hated sneaky criminals. I knew that. I knew that, but... Once I got fired from KB Security and lost all the money I had, she wouldn't have any reason to stay with me. I thought she would leave me for sure. So that's why you became Musk to Musk? Yes, but it's all over now. A broken bowl can never be put back together! That's not true, right, Nick? Right. Really? Can we go back to the way things were? You'll be fine, and Nick can prove it! I can. I kind of wish you would check with me first. Mr. Delight, even if a bowl is broken, there's always a way to put it back together. The Sacred Urn. Desi was the one who found this. By the way, yes, it can be put back together, but... It was once broken. There are cracks in it now. At the least, it's going to mean a lot more work to get the bowl to be stable again. Desiree, your wife, she's always believed in you, Ron. That's why you'll be fine. You don't have to worry about anything. Oh, there you are! Mr. Light. You did it, Ronnie. You're innocent. I'm so happy. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. But, uh... I, I suppose you don't want anything more to do with me, do you? Ronnie, why didn't you talk to me about what was going on? I had no idea you'd quit KBQ security. I never imagined that it were really musk to musk either. Miss Delight, what are you going to do now that you know? Y you're not going to really leave him, are you? Come on, it's obvious, isn't it? 
How could I ever let a wonderful man like him get away? After all, my bike's really fast. So fast that there's no way he could ever get away. Uh, but didn't you say that you hated criminals? Oh, I only hate people who act all cowardly and sneaky. Like that detective. I see. My Ronnie went and declared his crimes before he committed them like a man. I just love a man who's so chivalrous. Chivalrous? I knew I was right about you. Every day I spend with you is filled with thrills and excitement. Desi! Desiree, you really do love Ron, don't you? Nicky boy? Yes? I'm really glad I asked you to defend my Ronnie. Thank you so much. I'll never forget what you've done for us. Oh, well, t take care of yourself. You too, Nicky boy. I can feel my face going red. Mr. Nick, stick by your congratulations. <gasps> Talk about bad timing. Mr. Nick, how could you with another man's wife in front of Maya? No, I'll never forgive you. So, just as the case came to a close, so too did my consciousness. Ron said, a broken bowl can never be put back together. But I know that's not true. I mean, just look. Here's a perfect example of one that was put back together even better than before. Okay, you know what? I'm actually gonna... you're probably gonna hear my... typing now and all. But I am going to look up the God damn it the double jeopardy rule. Just so I can prove to you that it's wrong. Okay, here it says, from Wikipedia, Double Jeopardy is a procedural defense that forbids a defendant from being tried again on the same or similar charges following a legitimate acquittal or conviction. This means that it would not have worked on Luke Atme because he was not the defendant of the murder case of Colt Kane Bullard. It was, he was simply a witness. The only way he could have gotten the double jeopardy is if we had gotten enough even circumstantial evidence to get him into a trial for Kane Bullard, or for Kane Bullard's murder. He had been a defendant then, and then he would have been deemed innocent from that crime. So, Double Jeopardy doesn't work for him. Double Jeopardy for Ron regarding the Musk de Musk. Since it does say that it's for the same case or a similar case, he might have gotten to the point of being really free with double, double jeopardy of that. I just wanted to say that, just so you know. That was the end of case 3-2, and Godot is so annoying I would very much like to skip to the last case immediately so I don't have to continue playing this game anymore, just so I can get rid of him, but I can't. But the next case is 3-3, it's a filler case, one important thing happens, and otherwise it's not very important. I am really tempted to skip that case, but we'll see. So I'll see you next time!